Good afternoon. How are you feeling? Good, right? Isn't it an amazing day today? You know, when I woke up, I heard the birds singing, the sun entering my room through the window. Summer is coming. Sometimes we just rush, and we don't realize how beautiful life is, how lucky we are to be alive. We go to and forth. We wake up, we swallow our breakfast, we run to our work workplace, school, university, or even on our way home. We work, we eat, we sleep, and repeat. And because of this high-speed lifestyle, we miss a lot of things that surround us. We all know here someone who had or still has cancer. Cancer is a big word, right? It's something that makes us feel scared, weak. We don't like this word. If we see someone walking down the, street, down the street completely bald, especially if she is a woman or a girl, wearing a scarf or even a face mask, we just turn our eyes out. Maybe because of fear, maybe because of ignorance, maybe because we want to keep on thinking that everything's okay on our path. But this is kind of contradictory, right? If we want a full, diverse society, we need to normalize cancer and other diseases that are very present today. Today, I want to tell you a story, my story. Imagine, 19 years old girl, healthy, active, a dreamer, in the middle of my bachelor's degree in law, going to university from Monday to Friday, being a member of a hip-hop dance company, dancing up to nine hours per week, also working as a hip-hop instructor in schools. My mom always says that I learned to talk and to dance before walking. And then she adds, and she never stopped talking. You know, my schedule was very tight, going to university from 9 to 4. I had a meeting at 5.30, but remember that at 30 you have to be ready for the rehearsal. But when am I supposed to study? It's just like you are driving a car at 300 kilometers per hour, and all of a sudden, <coughs> handbrake. On the 19th of March, 2013, I met leukemia. Like many of you, I thought that I was invincible, that I could do everything, that I could brave the impossible. But that day, I could not. I still remember how I entered the hospital eating an apple with my knee pads and sports clothes in my bag because I had a rehearsal at 8.30, and carrying a huge constitutional law book because I had an exam the following day, and you know, I didn't have time to waste uh, in a hospital. And leaving doctor's room one hour later, in a wheelchair, completely covered by a, by a blanket with a face mask, and having a restricted area of a hospital, the so-called isolated rooms. For those who are not familiarized with leukemia, which in my case was the acute myeloid one, the myeloid, the myeloid line proliferates abnormally, invading the whole bone marrow. This interferes with the production of normal cells, which at the same time causes immune deficiency. In other words, instead of having an army of strong soldiers to defend myself against infections and other diseases, I had an army of babies. I was like a newborn, vulnerable to everything in this world. Even the least dangerous cold could have killed me. I was immediately locked in that room for an entire month, without sun, without fresh air, without the smell of the trees. All the things that I had to do, dancing, working, studying, were stopped. I had nothing to do, only to wait for next steps. The first days were really tough, were, were very tough. All those medical checks, blood tests, chemotherapy, I lost all my hair, and I even could start feeling how the treatment was affecting my skin, my stomach, and even my eyes. I have to admit that at the beginning I was scared. And I could even read the fear in my mother's, my brother's, and my sister's eyes, because the only way they could enter my room was with a face mask. You know that you are stronger than what you think, do you? Don't you? I decided to take what I had. I decided to change the C into a D, so as to remain what I was, a dancer. So I started dancing in my room, doing all the exercises, choreographies, push-ups, squats, abs, 
everything as soon as I, as far as I could because I had I was wearing my catheter. I started studying for my university exams. I took them all as soon as I left the hospital. I started to do all those things that I never had time to, learning how to play the guitar, uh, reading a lot of books, watching all those films that I wanted to watch, having nice conversations with my family, and discovering new things about them, but also about me. But above all, I was envisaging the day that I could go out of that room, feel the sun kissing my skin again, breathing fresh air, and listening to the birds singing. You know, it's not always necessary, but sometimes it's important to have a transplant. This is normally the last resort because of its toxicity. In my case, although I didn't know it, it was extremely necessary. So doctors started to check if my brother and my sister were compatible. In my case, the requirement was to be up to 80% compatible. But it hardly ever happens, actually less than 25% of the times. One amazing day, a doctor entered my room and she said, we got it. But you got what? We got a donor. My brother was not only 80% compatible, he was 100%. And this fact speeded the whole process up. On the 5th of July 2013, I was transplanted. And that was the beginning of my new life. But you know, a bone marrow transplant is not something that happens immediately, but lasts a few months. So I had to deal with leukemia also outside of the hospital while its effects were still visible. I still remember how people were feeling uncomfortable because I sat, ne I sat next to them in a metro, completely bold, wearing a face mask or even in a restaurant, while some people were staring at me with big eyes, like if I was something weird, something wrong, something dangerous. The, other was, the others was just turning their eyes out. Imagine at the university, or even in a nightclub. Six months later, I started to dance, to study, to travel, to work. I was completely back. I'm so grateful for how far I've gone, for how far I've fought, and for how far I was giving this gift of life. But you already can tell how lucky I was. Although those many, 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 many who have leukemia today are brave, unstoppable, and powerful, leukemia still takes one out of four children and two out of four adults. I, f I felt that I had to do something. I felt that I had to use this new opportunity to help other people. So with my dance professor, we started a, a charity project, which is called Arte Hasta la Medula, Art to the Bone Marrow, based on dancing as a tool for change. Thanks to three dance events in Barcelona and several donations, the project gathered up to 13,000 euros, which were immediately donated to Josep Carreras Foundation Research Institute Against Leukemia. According to my doctor, I had two magic cards. The first one, 97% of the treatment depended on me, on my positive energy, on my patience, on my willingness to be alive. But the second one depended on the treatment, on the medicines, on having a donor. But we don't know much about it, right? It's just like something that doesn't go with us. It's very far away. It can happen to us, it can, it can happen to any of our relatives, but believe me, life can change in an instant. If there's a big train crash there, we can thankfully see how many people are queuing outside of the hospital so as, so as to give blood. But what about bone marrow? What if I tell you that we need bone marrow donation every year, every month, every week, every day, every hour, every minute, every second, what if I tell you that being a donor is as easy as going to a blood donation unit in your hospital, giving a small sample of blood, and after your consent, you are registered to a network of donors, normally international one. And if one amazing day you are called because you are compatible to someone else, you only have to wait to your hospital and spend there a few hours. Normally, more than 90% of the cases, this takes place be a peripheral blood stem cell collection, which is similar to giving blood, and lasts around five, six hours. And tell me, 
what are five, six hours of your day compared to all days of one person's life? I firmly believe that we can make this change together, that we can beat leukemia in the streets, in the metro, in a restaurant, at the university, in a nightclub, embracing diversity, but also in our blood. And why am I doing this? Maybe you are asking yourself, I cannot donate blood, I cannot donate bone marrow, I cannot be Wonder Woman or Superman like you, although I have two DNAs now. We don't need second chances to make the most of our life. We don't need second chances to run faster, to jump higher, to dance like nobody's watching. But we can be a second chance to someone else out there, or even in this room. If only you, or you, or even you, decide to be a donor today, we can save one life. Making this society more aware, more real, and more di diverse. And you know what? If we can do that, uh, my speech today was worth it. Thank you very much.